Hi, it's Tom here, and welcome to another Gradle best practice tip. And this time we're talking about configuration avoidance. And this might sound a little bit complicated, and dare I say it even a little bit boring, but actually it's not because it can save time running our builds. And saving time is always good with me. Anyway, to understand configuration avoidance, you need a, you need a basic understanding of the Gradle project lifecycle. And that consists of three different phases, First one is initialization, where Gradle figures out what projects are involved in our build. Second one is configuration, where Gradle actually runs our build script. And third one is execution, where Gradle executes any tasks that we've asked it to execute. Now, during the configuration phase, there may be tasks that have a very slow configuration. For example, it could be reading a file or even going off to the internet to call an API anything that slows down the configuration. The nice thing about configuration avoidance is that it can defer that or even make it so that it doesn't run at all when running tasks on our Gradle build. And that can save a lot of time. Anyway, the best way to explain this is with an example. And right here, I've got a build.gradle with a task defined really slow config. And in the configuration stage for that task, it just sleeps for three seconds. And during the execution stage, it prints out a highly amusing message. So let's run this task with dot slash gradle w really slow config. And there we go. It took three seconds to execute. And that's because the configuration stage takes three seconds. But what if we wanted to execute a completely different task? Let's try executing help, which comes with every Gradle project. So dot slash gradle w help, what do you think is going to happen here? Same story, it took three seconds. So even though we're running a completely different task, because really slow config takes three seconds to configure, our total build still takes three seconds. It doesn't really seem fair, does it? Well, thankfully, Gradle has some logic where we can say tasks dot register, and then we pass the task name, and then we configure our task like before. Now, if we run the help task again, it's really quick. And the reason for this is that the creation and the configuration of really slow config is being deferred until it's actually needed. And in the case where we run the help task, it never actually configures really slow config because we're not executing that task. But, of course, if I run really slow config, it still takes three seconds because really slow config is, well, really slow. Anyway, hopefully you can see at this point the advantage of using configuration avoidance and how that might save you some time in your own project. If you want to migrate your project to use this mechanism, it's really quite simple. Just use tasks.register. I do recommend running a build scan, which you can do by running your build with a dash dash scan. So yes, copy the URL, and then you can browse to your build scan on the Gradle website and just go to performance, configuration, and right here are the details of the configuration phase of your build. And right here, for our very simple build, we can see total tasks 18. And most of those tasks are default tasks. But the one task we have added is on this row, created during task graph calculation. And that's saying that this task was created because we actually specifically executed it. If you run this build scan and you see some tasks under created immediately or created during configuration, then these are tasks that you can consider to use tasks.register and apply configuration avoidance to save time during your build. So hopefully you can understand now that configuration avoidance isn't as boring as it might sound at first, and it can really save you some time with your build. If you want to learn more about the basics of Gradle, like the project structure, the build.gradle, Java projects, and how the tasks work together, then check out my course. It's about one hour, it's free. It's called Get Going with Gradle. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you 
in the next Gradle best practice tip.